Welcome to Levant TV headlines. Washington has made the first weapons drop to Kurdish fighters battling jihadists in the Syrian town of Kobani that they hate as a major boost for their nearly five-week resistance campaign. Turkey says it is assisting Iraqi Kurdish Peshmerga fighters to cross its borders to join Syrian Kurdish forces battling jihadists for the Syrian town of Kobani. Nine people have been killed in new violence in Benghazi where pro-government forces have launched an offensive against Islamist militias, raising the toll to 75 dead in five days. At least 20 Houthi rebels have been killed in clashes with Al-Qaeda militants and a car bombing in Yemen's central town of Rada. And tensions have flares between Algeria and Morocco after Rabat accused an Algerian soldier of firing on Moroccan civilians across their shared border and seriously wounding one of them. Now let's have a look at top headlines in today's newspapers in the Middle East. From Beirut, the Daily Star reports that uh, the head of Lebanon's general security has flown to Qatar to follow up on the 27 Lebanese soldiers and policemen being held captive by Islamist militants along the border with Syria. The paper also reports that Liberian President Alan Johnson Sirleaf said Ebola had killed more than 2,000 people in her country and has brought it to a standstill, noting that Liberia and two other badly hit countries were already weakened by years of war. The Egypt Independent is reporting that seven Egyptian army officers have been killed and other six injured by a remotely detonated roadside bomb southwest of Arish in the Sinai Peninsula. The paper also reports that Israeli and Palestinian police kept a tight watch over the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound amid high tensions between Muslims and Jewish visitors to the holy site and calls from Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to defend it by all means. And from the UAE, the Khalish Times reports that the Emirates has said airstrikes may have slowed down the ISIS advance, but there is an urgent need to combat emerging threats and extremism as it sought to enhance regional understanding to meet global challenges. The paper also reports that the Pope has closed an assembly of Catholic bishops that revealed deep divisions on how to respond to homosexuality and divorce, saying the church should not be afraid of change and new challenges. And now let's have a look at top Mideast headlines from papers here in the UK. Starting with The Guardian, which leads Middle East News, reporting that a poll has found that 75% of Israeli Jews oppose the creation of a Palestinian state within the pre-1967 borders if it means withdrawing Israeli troops from the Jordan Valley. The survey conducted by a right-wing think tank headed by a political ally of the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu makes for stark reading contra contradicting previous polls showing up to 60% of Israelis in favour of a two-state solution. The Independent leads Middle East News reporting that a single mother has travelled to Turkey in a dangerous attempt to rescue her injured son who had joined ISIS, having been radicalised on the internet. The paper says he is one of an estimated 600 British youth who have secretly travelled to Syria this year, having been radicalised. And also from the UK, The Telegraph reports that the US military says it has airdropped weapons, ammunition and medical supplies to Kurdish forces defending the Syrian city of Kobani against Islamic State militants. The airdrops were the first of their kind and followed weeks of US and coalition airstrikes in and near Kobani, near the Turkish border. Now let's have a look at international papers. From Beijing, the Global Times reports that an Arab League delegation headed by Arab League chief Nabil al-Arabi arrived in the Iraqi capital Baghdad yesterday on an official visit to show support with the struggling Middle East country in its fight against the extremist Islamic State militant group. And finally, Germany's Deutsche Welle reports that the United Nations Refugee Agency has confirmed that many fewer refugees from Morton and Syria were being taken in by Lebanon, which is already hosting 1.1 million displaced Syrians. The UNHCR's representative in Lebanon has called on the international community to step up investment in Lebanese infrastructure, such as healthcare and schooling, to help Lebanon cope. That's it for today. For more updates, visit us on levant.tv.
thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again tomorrow and bye for now.